So the study that I was able to present at ASH was titled Ida Cabdegene Vic Lucil or Ida Cell CAR T cell therapy in patients with relapsed and refractory multiple myeloma who have received a prior BCMA targeted therapy, a real world multi institutional experience. Um, this was done by the U.S. Multiple Myeloma Consortium, which at the time of project completion was a collaboration amongst, amongst 11 U.S. academic centers, and we're happy to say that uh, more institutions have since joined uh, to help provide data uh, for more patients in the future. So to provide some background, IDACEL is an autologous BCMA-targeted CAR T-cell therapy that's been approved in the U.S., for the treatment of relapsed and refractory myeloma after patients have received four or more prior lines of therapy, which include uh, treatment with an immunomodulatory drug such as lenalidomide, a proteasome inhibitor such as bortezomib or carfilzomib, and a CD38 targeting monoclonal antibodies such as darotumumab. This was approved based on results from the KARMA clinical trial in which 128 patients were infused with IDACEL. Uh, most recently, at the median follow-up of a little over two years, uh, treatment with IDACEL in that setting had resulted in a response rate of 73%, with a CR or better rate of 33%, a median progression-free survival of 8.6 months, and a median overall survival of 24.8 months. Now, BCMA has emerged as a very attractive target for anti-myeloma therapy over the last five years or so. And in addition to CAR T-cells, there are other types of treatments that can target BCMA. These include antibody drug conjugates like belantamab mafodotin or bispecific T-cell engaging antibodies uh, such as teclistimab. And so in the KARMA clinical trial, patients who had received one of these BCMA-targeted therapies in the past were excluded. And so the aim of this study was really to help uh, describe outcomes for patients who had had a prior BCMA targeted therapy, uh, both to help understand what the outcomes are and maybe help uh, understand better about sequencing of these therapies in the future. So again, this was um, a collaborative effort amongst 11 centers uh, where we retrospectively reviewed data for the patients who had received the commercially available or FDA approved CAR T cell product. Um, and the patients who were included in this study had undergone apheresis as of May 1st and were subsequently infused with the CAR T cell, and they were considered a valuable for response if, if uh, a day 30 response assessment had occurred. When looking at the types of patients that were enrolled, you know, retrospectively reviewed in this study, so we had uh, the largest cohort uh, I think reported to date of a prior BCMA targeted therapy uh, of 50 patients. Um, our patients who received this at the commercially available Ida cell without a prior BCMA targeted therapy was about 153 patients. And on the far right, we see the Karma clinical trial population. And so compared to the clinical trial population in blue, we see that our you know, real world patients um, were more likely to have a performance status of two or greater we're more likely to have extramedullary disease or RISS stage three disease, um, which are, are you know potentially kind of higher risk features than what were included on the clinical trial. Highlighted in red are differences between the BCMA targeted therapy cohort and the no prior BCMA therapy cohort. And uh, such patients had received a, a greater number of median prior lines of therapy at nine compared to six, and were more likely to have pentarefractory disease or, you know, that which means uh, myeloma exposed to uh, drugs like bortezomib, carfilzomib, lenalidomide, pomalidomide, and a CD38 targeted monoclonal antibody. When we look at that prior BCMA targeted therapy cohort, 38 or 76 patients had received a prior antibody drug conjugate, of which the vast majority, this was commercially available, belantamab mafodotin. Seven patients received a prior bispecific antibody and, and five received a prior CAR T. And here is the median uh, amount of time of prior BCMA targeted therapy treatment and time from last exposure to both apheresis and infusion in days. And we can see that 40% of our patients received their standard of care Ida cell within six months of their last BCMA targeted therapy. When we look at the response rates to the first BCMA targeted therapy that these patients had received, we see that in the prior antibody drug conjugate cohort, which again was by far and away the largest cohort, the response rate was low at 17%. In the prior bispecific cohort, the response rate was uh, actually 0%, so there were no responders. Uh, and in the prior CAR T-cell cohort, um, four out of five or 80% of patients responded. 
It's important to note clinical trials of uh, target doses of these bispecific antibodies have response rates generally around 60% or more. And so uh, in, in this study that the seven patients that we reviewed, five of them had received a, a suboptimal dose, meaning they, they initially received it on a clinical trial at a dose that was lower than the dose that was later selected uh, for dose expansion and, and, and hence might res, um, explain some of that low response rate. When we look at the safety outcomes for the, these real-world patients, um, there was no significant differences in our prior BCMA-targeted therapy cohort compared to the, the cohort of patients who had not received a prior BCMA-targeted therapy. Overall, rates of grade 3 or higher cytokine release syndrome were quite low. I will note that numerically, um, grade 3 or higher neurotoxicity was higher at 9 and 7% compared to 3% in the KARMA study but those toxicities were graded with different criteria. So in the KARMA study, they used the NCI, CTCAE criteria, whereas um, in, the, in our review, we used the ASTCT criteria for grading ICANs. When we look at hematologic toxicity after treatment with standard of care IDASEL, um, patients who had received a prior BCMA-targeted therapy were more likely to have grade four thrombocytopenia uh, at 46% compared to 32%, and this translated to a statistically significant increase in the use of a TPO mimetic, which is a medication that's uh, given to help boost platelet counts uh, in that cohort compared to the other. Now, here are the response rates to the Idacel, the, stand, the commercially available Idacel. On the left, we see that patients who had had a prior BCMA-targeted therapy had a response rate of 74%, which was significantly lower than 88% in the patients who had not received a prior BCMA therapy. And the complete response or, uh, or better rate of 29% was also significantly lower than 48% in the no prior BCMA-targeted therapy. When we break these responses down by the specific type of prior BCMA-targeted therapy, uh, we see that the lowest uh, response was in the patients who had received a prior antibody drug conjugate. Again, this was uh, the majority of the patients. However, the response rate of 68%. Patients who had received a prior uh, bispecific had a response rate of 86%. And then all five or 100% of our patients who received a prior CAR T-cell therapy did respond to standard of care IDASEL. We can also see that the prior CAR T cohort had the uh, better depth of response with 60% or more of 60% uh, of patients having a CR or better. And I just, this is a reminder that these response rates to you know, Ida cell in the prior antibody drug conjugate cohort and the bispecific cohort are relatively high I mean, compared to how, you know, the, the very low response rates they had with their first BCMA targeted therapy. So when we break down the prior BCMA targeted therapy cohort by the 36 patients who responded compared to the 13 who did not respond, we see that uh, the responders had a shorter duration, uh, a median, median duration of prior BCMA targeted therapy treatment. They also had a longer amount of time, median time from their last BCMA targeted therapy uh, to both apheresis and to idacel infusion. Um, when we categorically broke this down by six months, um, we could see that the response rates were numerically lower for the patients who got their idacel uh, less than six months after their last BCMA targeted therapy at 60% compared to 83%. Uh, but this was not statistically significant in a relatively small sample size. And so these are the progression-free survival outcomes. Um, so in the blue, we see that the patients who had not gotten a prior BCMA-targeted therapy had a median progression-free survival of nine months. And this is very similar to what was seen in the KARMA clinical trial, which is reassuring. However, in the patient, in the cohort of patients who had who had received a prior BCMA targeted therapy, the median progression free survival was quite low at 3.2 months, and this difference was statistically significant. And when we break down those progression free survival outcomes by the specific type of prior BCMA targeted therapy, we see that in the yellow, the patients who had gotten a prior CAR T were doing the best as the median progression free survival had not yet been reached. The patients who had received a prior antibody drug conjugate had a median progression free survival of 3.2 months and a median PFS of 2.8 months in the patients who had had a prior bispecific antibody. We did some analyses. Uh, this was a univariate analysis. To, to see um, what factors might associate with responses. And so we saw that generally patients 
who had penta refractory disease were less likely to have an overall response. This is a multivariate analysis for, uh, done for all of the patients. And the goal of this is to say, you know, there, we know that patients who got a prior BCMA targeted therapy are likely to have some other high risk features that would make their likelihood of response lower as well, such as extramedullary disease or high risk cytogenetics or their performance status. But we want to try to control for that and see if is BCM having received a prior BCMA targeted therapy an independent predictor of these outcomes. And what we saw was it was an independent predictor uh, and associated with uh, a less likelihood of attaining a complete response or better, and also an independent predictor of worse PFS and OS outcomes. Now, things that are known like high-risk cytogenetics and the performance status um, of two or greater were associated with worse PFS and OS outcomes, but were not associated with the less likelihood of response. And in the interest of time, I'll move on to the conclusion. So, you know, our study demonstrated that overall treatment with standard of care IDASEL in patients who had received a prior BCMA targeted therapy resulted in relatively high response rates. And these response rates are higher than the, uh, what is seen with, you know, commercially available therapies for patients who have received this many prior treatments. Nonetheless, you know, treatment with the prior BCMA targeted therapy uh, is an independent predictor of uh, less likelihood of, of having a response and, and, and worse progression-free and overall survival outcomes. And the timing of the prior, you know, the IDASEL infusion compared to the prior BCMA targeted therapy may be an important predictor of the likelihood of response because we saw that the responders we're more likely to have a shorter duration of prior exposure and a, and a larger amount of time from their last treatment to the, the, the CAR T infusion. And then the small cohort, albeit five patients, of so patients who had gotten a prior CAR T cell therapy, even though it was also targeting BCMA, um, had the best outcomes. They had a you know 100% response rate and the best progression-free survival outcomes. And so it kind of highlights that uh, treating with repeated CAR T or cell therapies in the future may be a promising uh, strategy. And then lastly, um, you know, the inferior PFS outcomes that we we're seeing when the prior BCMA targeted therapy cohort, well, again, with the median PFS of 3.2 months, um, suggests that this continues to be an unmet need for our patients. And so, you know, I think in the event that in the future, we need to think about combination studies or consolidation or maintenance approaches for patients who've had a prior BCMA targeted therapy, who then go on to receive CAR T. Um, you know, as far as impact for patients, I think this helps generate real world data. You know, a lot of the patients who are eligible and who we see in the clinic to receive these therapies, are, you know, would not have met uh, the eligibility criteria for the clinical trial. On the one hand, in our cohort of patients who had not had a prior BCMA targeted therapy, it shows that the, the outcomes are very comparable to what was seen on a clinical trial, which I think patients should find reassuring. Uh, regarding the prior BCMA targeted therapy cohort, you know, again, there was the chances of a response were still fairly high, although lower than if you had not had a prior BCMA targeted therapy. Um, but, they, you know, there are some concerns with the median progression-free survival for patients who have received this. And that's not to say, again, there's a lot of flaws with the use of median. There's, that means half the patients did better. And we have some patients who've done really well um, with, with two prior BCMA targeted therapies, especially those patients who had gotten a prior CAR T cell therapy on clinical trial. But what it does mean for the future is that we need to be thoughtful about the way we sequence these therapies. Uh, of course, this requires further investigation and you know, prospective clinical trials, um, but also that we may need to consider doing a little bit more than just a one-time CAR-T infusion for these patients who have had a prior BCMA-targeted therapy. And, and with that, I'd just like to thank you know, all the patients and their families who contributed to this study as well as our collaborating investigators at the 11 institutions uh, in, the, in the consortium.